वेलकम टू ई पाठशाला प्रोग्राम ऑन पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन दिस इज मॉड्यूल थ्री ऑफ इकोनॉमिक एंड फाइनेंशियल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एंड द टॉपिक इज प्रिंसिपल ऑफ फाइनेंशियल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन फ्रेंड्स आई एम प्रोफेसर संजीव कुमार महाजन प्रोफेसर इन पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एंड डीन स्टूडेंट्स वेलफेयर हिमाचल प्रदेश यूनिवर्सिटी आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ फाइनेंशियल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन the relevance of it and what major principles we follow throughout the world and the first we discuss about financial administration financial administration is as old as the organized governments all over the world the work of financial administration has increased especially after industrial revolution because if we see the history of industrial revolution it led to increase in production activities and also the labor activities which led to mechanized uh, system of production and hence uh, the meaning has changed from traditional financial administration to uh, the content or the financial administration uh, in the post industrial revolution scenario because the activities of government has increased over the period of time as the there is increase in the activities of the business it has led to the migration of people from one place to another in search of a job and hence the activities of the government has also increased now primarily we are confining ourselves to the financial administration now administration is molded uh, with a framework of legislative control over the executive when we say it is uh, molded or it's a framework of legislative control of executive this is helped or this is carried out with the help of principles which are the key to achieve the objectives of financial administration here the money is collected in simple words from the taxpayers and are uh, used according to the priorities of the government in power for the welfare of the people of that country so in order to carry out these activities now we have certain uh, rules and uh, rules and certain way of doing things the way the procedure is laid down but in this part of this uh, uh, module we'll be talking about the principles of financial administration efficient an efficient financial administration implies collection of uh, each penny from the taxpayer and its utilization or proper utilization of that money now these things are given in the constitution and which is based on certain broad principles uh, through which the government of the country uh, takes care of the collection made by it from the taxpayers and then it uses that money for the welfare of the uh for the welfare of the people of that country now in this direction we are going to discuss the broad principles of financial administration the first principle is uh, unity of organization now unity of organization where we say that all the employees of an organization working towards the same goal which has been established or set up by the organization now if each one of us in an organization is working towards the achieving or towards the achievement of the goal which means the organization realizes its position or work with the help of its employees for that we require a sound system of financial administration which needs to be based on unity of organization more unified uh, because in an organization we have number of units what we call them departments or or you can say branches these are number of units now these units need to be unified so that uh, these agencies where we can bring coordination into this and uh, so that we can have more centralized uh, the uh, responsibility of hierarchy of officials so that we can achieve efficiency in the organization now here the coordination doesn't mean that we are trying to concentrate the powers at the top here what we are talking about is the decision making should be made by the top officials of the organization 
and the details should be left to the subordinates. Now, what I mean by details is how to execute the decision for that, what all steps are required, that should be decentralized. So, which refers to that we talk in harmonious relationship with all employees working in an organization. Now, the best example before us is Niti Aayog. If we see the composition of Niti Aayog, it is a combination of representatives from all the states, different agencies, and at the central level. Now, they are coming together to discuss the basic problems and then trying to formulate policies. So, the purpose of Niti Aayog is to unify uh, the coordination, unifying the agencies under its umbrella. Now, similarly, in an organization, when we have social units, which are deliberately constructed and reconstructed to seek the achievement of specific goals. Now, there is a famous proverb that united we stand and divided we fall. Now, that exactly explains the concept of unity of organization because control in financial administration should lie with the top with the close coordination uh, between executives and the uh, higher executives that means there should be a proper linkages from top to bottom and bottom to top there should be a two-way communication where the decision making process is carried out by the top and is implemented by the lower staff in the organization when each one in the organization moves in the right direction it helps us in building a sound financial uh, system of an organization and this sound system of financial administration further helps us in realizing the goals of the organization. That is the principle of unity of organization. Now then we move on to second principle that is principle of simply city. Now it is normally said that financial administration must have the qualities of simplicity, regularity, and promptness. Now, by simplicity, we mean that the process, or you can say uh, the working of financial administration is, should be so simple that it is it can be understood by each one of us as a layman or as an organizational man or as an expert. So it should be very, very simple. It should be, uh, it should be in a simple words so that it is easier to be understood by each one of us. And then we talk about the regularity because any organization or any system works when there's a continuity in the system. If there's a break in the system, there's a, uh, there's a gap between system uh, in carrying out the activities, then the continuity is broken. And this, if the continuity is broken, then it is difficult for the organization to catch up that gap or fulfill that gap uh, in, in, in times to come. So it is always suggested that uh, regularity should be maintained. And then third thing we talk about is the promptness. So here promptness means that whenever a situation arises, we should take care of that immediately because if we are unable to do so then the things will sometimes go beyond the reach of a person and it is difficult to handle it so in this principle of simplicity we talk about simplicity regularity promptness which means that the simpler it is the better otherwise it will be more complex and it will hamper the functioning of the organization. For example, in order to uh, talk about the ease of business, we talk about a single window system. That means you are getting all the facilities at one place. So we are making the process simpler and this simpler simplicity will help in generating, in carrying out or in implementing the policies of the government from time to time. Now, this simplicity uh, principle is as follow, because what we expect from simplicity, we expect that it should strive for effectiveness, 
uh, within the resources. Now, when I say within the resources, that means that resources which are there, they are limited. Whatever the amount is, whatever the quantum is, that is limited. Now, once it is limited, that means that the system has to work within that limitation and we talk about how to achieve resources effectively. Now, another simplicity principle follows is uh, that its implication is, if we follow this, its implication is broader and richer because simply, uh, simplicity must aim at effectiveness, otherwise the principle will lose its uh, meaning. The most crucial point that is uh, uh, the basis of this principle is to identify the most important issues involved in the society. Because when we are dealing with uh, financial administration, we have to keep in mind the issues which are there in the society and we have to lay down the priorities uh, of, of that. And accordingly, because as I said earlier, the money is limited, that money needs to be appropriated, reappropriated in a right direction. So these issues uh, should be taken care of. Here when we are talking about these issues should be taken care of, we should take into consideration the cost. How do we calculate the cost? When we calculate the cost, we talk about the material cost, we talk about the labor cost, and these things help us in simplification of dealing with clients, minimize the effort, to accomplish the task or steps within a specified period of time. The financial process must aim at to minimize the chances of errors so that the wastage of material resources, labor resources, time can be avoided. Because ultimately, if we are unable to plug these wastages, then what will happen? It will add to the cost. So, the same penny which could have given you better result will give you less result. So it is a wastage of money and in mind it, this is the taxpayer's money. So we have to make sure that the taxpayer money is most effectively and efficiently uh, and economically utilized. Then sound uh, decision making uh, leads to saving of time and wasteful activities. Because whatever, when we carry out any activity, it all results in from the policy and how to implement it, what kind of directions, what kind of a decision making process is followed, that makes it very important. Because if at any stage the decision making process is faulty, then there is going to be wastage of time, energy, resources, whether it is human or physical. So when there is a wastage of resources, which means the money is not properly utilized. So every penny which is saved is earned. That is the motto of uh, simplicity principle. Now then less number of executives should be involved in the same making process. Because uh, that is why in the first principle uh, unity of organization, we said that the decision making process should be uh, retained at the top level. The purpose is that decision making process should be simpler, faster and easily communicable. And this can only happen when we involve less number of executives in taking a decision. And let the details be taken care of by the subordinates. That is why we say the less number of uh, executives involved in decision making should be, uh, uh, should be there so that uh, it justifies the, the proverb that too many cooks spoil the broth uh, is true in this case. This would lead to saving of time and resources. So project becomes productive if the governing body decides upon a smaller number of projects utilizing the available resources. Now which means that whenever we are talking about formulation of project, it should be small in the sense in size so that continuously we can monitor the progress of it you can complete it add on to the next go on to the third go on to the fourth so with this will help us in achieving the project in stage manner and it will be more efficient 
Now, if we go for the larger project at one stage, so there may be issues of implementation, coordination at different stages between the top management, middle management or the lower management. To avoid it, so we should have smaller projects, complete it, go on to the second one, go on to the third one. This will make uh, work more faster and simpler. Now, this is what we call it as the principle of simplicity. Now, the third principle is principle of regularity. Now, in this, when we talk about regularity, that is how we maintain continuity in an organization. Now, we made a reference of uh, regularity or continuity earlier also. But in this case, what we are suggesting is that any organization which is established with particular objectives, which it aims at achieving it with the help of uh, different resources, whether material or human resources. Now, that is only possible if the organization is able to achieve its objectives well within a time framework. Now, this is called regularity. That means there is a pace, continuous pace in achieving those activities. And if these activities are to be carried out, now that will also help in the life of the organization. If the, there is a break in these activities, then the organization may not survive for a longer period of time and the organization might meet its natural death because there is no regularity. Now, regularity basically refers to uh, <clears throat> that is based on a financial, a sound financial administration because organization has to perform its function and this function should be carried out of its own. Now, which means when we are talking about this is to be carried out by uh, itself means there has to be a continuity, there has to be a regularity. Now, this is, here, this is the job of the top management to see that these things are carried out in true sense, in a con it's a continuous process. Now, when we talk about this, what we talk about is that there has to be self-management of an agency, uh, which is very important. And if this principle of regularity is established and observed, there can be self-management. Now, self-management means that each one in the organization should consider himself as an organizational man and keeping his own personal agenda or personal objectives behind when he is working in the organization and he should work for the organizational goals or uh, for which he has been hired in the organization. Now, self-management is very important. So, self-management of an agency, uh, uh, if it is observed, then we can talk about principle of regularity. Then further, to maintain the continuity, or to maintain the pace, we may take help of uh, certain management techniques which are available uh, everywhere in the world where almost all good organizations are practicing those management techniques regularly. It does not imply that there should only be a system of regularity. Instead, there should be a system of regular uh, suit, regularity suiting to the needs of the organization. As we know that the change is a continuous process so that the organization needs to adapt itself with the changing environment and uh, with the changing technology. Nowadays, the technology is changing very fast. So a good organization will make a pace with the changing environment, with the changing technology. And if any organization is doing that, that organization survives for a longer period of time. Now, this principle would ensure the particular management techniques which are required under the circumstances the organization is working. Now, these techniques will further help in building the uh, resources of the organization. If the resources of the organizations are good, obviously, it will have an impact on the financial system of the organization. The sound financial system organization uh, also helps the credibility of the organization. So it is very important that organization will be more effective if there is a, 
regularized system of carrying activity in the organization. Now the next principle is principle of compliance with the legislature. Now this principle emphasizes the importance of strict compliance uh, with the will of the legislature for the smooth working of democratic system of administration. It is essential that in all financial matters, compliance should be made in accordance with the law uh, for the purpose and the, for the manner uh, which it, uh, for which it has been passed by the legislature. Now, it implies that when we are talking about uh, uh, compliance, especially in a democratic setup uh, like in India, where we have a, a parliamentary system of government, compliance is must. Now, why? Because here the people, they elect representatives and they represent them on their behalf in the parliament. And parliament is agency where the policy formulation or the decision making process is taken care of at the national level. So it is the responsibility of the parliament to take care of the needs of its people to whom they are representing. So in a, in a structure of parliamentary democracy, the system of financial administration must be organized and opened uh, and operated in such a manner to secure compliance uh, with all the legislature which has been carried out by the parliament or the legislature. As we know that the parliament does not have resources of its own, it is authorized to levy taxes and collected by different agencies as suggested or maintained uh, in the parliament. There are different agencies to collect that money. The purpose behind is that this money should go back to the society again. So in a parliament, when we talk about money is collected, the purpose behind it, it is going back uh, to the people of the country in the shape of uh, implementation of different social welfare policies, economic policies, and other uh, needs of the country where the money is required. Now the question arises that whatever money which is available to us is being utilized properly or not. So to, to see that we have different mechanisms which has been established by uh, legislature or the parliament and one such mechanism is audit. The basic purpose is to see whether the money which has been allocated to a particular agency is carried out or is appropriated judiciously by that agency and has made compliance uh, uh, to the policy under which they get money. So that is basically further we are talking about compliance. And these agencies, they talk about it, that the money which is being used should uh, go on to spend it judiciously. So there is no embezzlement of fund or misappropriation of funds. Now that is what we are talking about in this, that there should be a compliance. So compliance is something where one is expected to perform his duties and whether that duty is, is in accordance uh, with uh, uh, the job which he is performing. So compliance is basically what you have been assigned and what you are doing. If there is a gap, that means you are not able to perform your duties properly. Now similar is the case with money. If you have been given money, if you are using that money and if that money is not utilized properly, so there is a gap or there is a misappropriation of funds so that the guilty should be punished. So the executive will spend the money uh, the way uh, it has been approved by the legislature or the parliament. Now stress is uh, on macroeconomics management uh, is increasing day by day. That is it's gaining importance where the, there's a lot of responsibilities is attached to financial accounting uh, in the world so that the principle of compliance with the legislature helps in fulfilling this to, to strengthen the economic system of the country, fiscal sustainability, uh, reinforces the accountability system and strengthens economies. Furthermore, the governments are expected to demonstrate that the selected programs 
are part of the legitimate functions for which they have been uh, elected and uh, voted into power by the people of the country. So the government has to see that all those uh, facilities, all those uh, policies are carried out, which community needs it and our community should afford it. Now, financial administration collects and appro uh, appropriates public fund as a public trust. So nevertheless, it is quite uh, vulnerable and can lead to misuse of these funds as we have discussed for personal interest. So financial administration has therefore to be publicly answerable uh, for proper use of funds at several levels such as political, legal, administrative, organizational, professional, moral and so and so forth. So the purpose behind is that if we have regularized system then it will be more effective system and any system uh, or sound system will help in the development of the economy and if the development of the economy takes place it talks about the development of the human being living in that particular area next principle is principle of stability and balance the financial administration is characterized by technical expertise and hence cannot be left to the non-skilled worker or non-trained personnel because financial administration is becoming uh, all the more very technical in recent year time. This character poses a serious problem when there is a loss of specific trained personnel uh, in an organization. Now, when there is when we see there is a vacuum in uh, trained personnel, or the, when there is a vacuum or when the person leaves the organization, trained person leaves the organization, at that point of time, the organization should make sure that he is immediately replaced by another trained personnel. Now, because here we have to develop the capacity uh, to withstand the losses of specific trained personnel without serious consequences to effectiveness and efficiency. For this purpose, there is a need for effective manpower. Now, that is very important because no organization can work in vacuum and it has to ultimately depend upon human resource. So, the quality of human resource will be determined according to the requirement of the organization which is determined by the objectives and resources it has. Now, next principle is principle of control. Now, that is when we are talking about this, we are talking about efficiency and effectiveness over all the stages of financial administration. Such a control needs to be exercised by the executive government normally through different agencies, for example, finance department, treasuries or legislature uh, through the audit organization, which is independent of the executive government. The basic purpose uh, uh, making audit an independent agency is that, that it should come out with clear cut opinion about the uses of resources uh, in, in an organization so that there is no pressure from that uh, any organization or any, any quarter on the audit department. So that is why they have been uh, created as an independent organization. So to see that money is appropriately, judiciously, effectively, efficiently, economically utilized. Now that is the basic purpose of principle of control. Now then we talk about under this is the execution part. That means when the money is received, when the money is executed or spent, expenditure is incurred. Now that stability of uh, that stability of the country, the continuity of policy, uh, efficient execution of sanctioned plans and careful handling of uh, finances are the great measures due to uh, men of services who by their ability and exper uh, experience are a, an excellent position to put last scheme into execution because ultimately we have the trained manpower to execute these schemes then these schemes will result in the kind of results we expect from that, uh, that policy to achieve. Now that is why we talk about that 
Now, stability of a country or the continuity of policy is very important. Execution is important. And then evaluation or monitoring is important. Monitoring and then evaluation. Because when we do evaluation, then only we'll be able to come to know the utility of that policy. And last principle is principle of promptness. Now, in this principle, simply we are talking about the stresses of delivery. How quickly the organization is able to deliver. How uh, sound, uh, as we say, a sound system of financial administration presupposes promptness as it's functioning, in its functioning. Is uh, this quick delivery system is required to have a continuous system of administration which is lacking in India at present. Now, as we see, uh, there is a lack of promptness in our system, in the Indian system, and that is why the money is being misutilized. Uh, we keep on hearing about scams, embezzlement of funds by different agencies, by different people, because there is no promptness in that. Now, this, with this, we come to the end of this topic. Now, in short, what we have discussed is how these principles now, we have discussed seven principles in detail uh, of financial administration. All these seven principles taken together makes a sound financial administration system of any organization. Now, we need to depend upon all these principles because this, these principles will help the smooth functioning of organization. Thank you very much.